I will explain everything you need to get started using the Aquafatis toolset to make content for iOS and Android apps. By the end of this video, you will have the knowledge needed to create interactive content in InDesign and preview that content on your mobile devices. To begin with, let's visit Aquafatis.com. Before you can download the software, you need to log in and create a username and password. You can click on Login in the top right hand side of the screen. Then you can click on the Login and Register button. You will need to register a new account. If you are setting up an account for a client, it is a good idea to use a generic email address for the customer. For example, you might want to use art at companyname.com. Since multiple users may use this as a login to their Cloud Connect account, you really don't want to set this up as an individual's name at companyname.com. After you create the login, you will be sent an email to that address to confirm the registration process. Click on that link and log in for the first time. Now that you are logged in, you can choose the tools section from the top of the menu. All of our tools can be downloaded from within the Aquafatis Connect app. Choose the Download All Tools button to download the Aquafatis Connect app. You will find the Aquafatis Connect application in your Downloads folder. Unzip it. Then move the file to your Applications folder. You can now launch the Aquafatis Connect app. The application appears in the top menu bar on your computer. You will see the Aquafatis logo in the top right of the screen. Click on the logo to open the application. You will need to choose Sign In to log into the app. Type in your username and password and choose Sign In. Now you can click on the wrench on the left to reveal the tools. The first tool you will need is the plugins for InDesign. Install the InDesign authoring tool. Once it is downloaded, the installer will launch automatically. You will be prompted to choose your version of InDesign. Then you can run the installer. You should know that you can also ask us for an installer for the InDesign plugins as well. In some cases, depending on IT restrictions, the IT department might want a more controlled install of this software at a business. For example, when you deliver the 3.3 installer to a business, you would want everyone at that business to have the same version of InDesign, the same fonts loaded, and the same version of the Aquafatis plugins for InDesign. When we release the 3.4 installer, you would want to make sure that none of the team upgrades until the app is upgraded and a new version of the app is submitted to the store that supports the new plugin. Once the new app version is accepted into the store, the whole team would update to the new plugin set for InDesign. So in some cases, you wouldn't want a user to actually have Aquafatis Connect on their machines, but instead have a more controlled deployment of the plugin. Once the plugins are installed, you can launch InDesign. You should now see Aquafatis in the InDesign menu, and there should be two panels listed here, the AVE Project Manager panel, and the AVE Interactivity panel. If by chance you do not see Aquafatis in the InDesign menu, you may need to change the permissions on the Plugins folder in InDesign. When Adobe InDesign CC is installed, the default permissions on this folder are set to Read Only. This is why you don't see it in the menu. Should this happen, quit InDesign. Go to Applications, Adobe InDesign CC, Plugins. Highlight the Plugins folder. And from the menu, choose File, Get Info. Give the user read-write access in the Sharing and Permissions section. Then click on the gear in the bottom left and choose Apply to Enclosed Items. Now you should be able to launch InDesign CC and see Aquafatis in the InDesign menu. Now that you have the plugins installed, you need a viewer to send these interactive documents from InDesign to an application that can render the content for testing. 
Our branded viewer app is called the Aquafatis Viewer. You can download this app from the iTunes, Google Play, or Amazon Marketplace. Simply search for it on your tablet or smartphone in any of the respective stores. The app is free to use, just like our plugin. Download the app and launch it. If you don't have a device for testing, you can test the files on your own computer using the iOS simulator. The iOS simulator is part of Xcode. Xcode is the application developers use to make apps for iOS. No need to worry, you don't actually need to know how to develop an Xcode to use this software. The only computers that will actually need Xcode on them are, one, for the people who want to view their documents on their own computer instead of on a device, or two, the person making the application using App Factory for iOS will need Xcode installed. To download Xcode, find and launch the App Store from the Spotlight search in the top right corner of your Mac. Once that is launched, search for Xcode. Download and install Xcode. It is quite a big file, so this may take some time to download. Once it is downloaded, you can find Xcode in your Applications folder. Launch it for the first time, as it may need to update. After you launch it once, you can open the iOS simulator. In Finder, navigate to Applications, Xcode, and right-click the folder. Choose Show Package Contents, navigate through Contents, Applications, and it is here you will find the iPhone simulator. Launch the iPhone simulator. If you are going to use this for previewing documents, it is a good idea to choose Keep in Doc for this application. Now that you have the iOS simulator installed, you will need to load the Aquafatis Viewer app inside the iOS simulator. Launch the Aquafatis Connect app. In the Testing Tools section, you will find the Aquafatis Viewer installer for iOS. Download and launch this app. Choose the bottom Install to install the Aquafatis Viewer on the iOS simulator. Choose Install and Launch to install the Aquafatis Viewer on the iOS simulator. Now that you either have the Aquafatis Viewer app installed on either a device or in iOS simulator, you can test the workflow in InDesign. With InDesign launched, go to Aquafatis in the menu and choose the AVE Project Manager panel. We will begin by making a project from existing print documents. Then we will make a project designed or redesigned specifically for the iPad. The AVE Project Manager panel is where you define all of your projects or issues for digital publishing. You begin by clicking on the Create Project button. I'll name this project My First AVE PDF, and I'll choose AVE PDF as the project type. The project type you choose depends on the output you want for your document. We offer many different entry points into digital publishing, which range from our simplest solutions to our most advanced. For APDF, this project type was made for publishers who want to enter into the digital publishing arena with the least amount of rework to their content. For example, if I am a magazine publisher who delivers a monthly print edition to my readers, and I want to enter into a digital publishing workflow with the least amount of rework to that content, I could choose AVE PDF. Choosing AVE PDF means that I wouldn't need to change the page sizes to the device, such as 1024 by 768 for the iPad. I could even leave them at their print sizes. You must know that if you don't change the page size, the content will letterbox on the device meaning that the content, since it doesn't actually fit to the aspect ratio of the device, can have different fitting modes. This is an example of a project set up as an AVE PDF. When you hold the device vertically, you see one page at a time. When you hold the device horizontally, you see spreads. This is how AVE PDF handles the two orientations of a device. You can also see that I can pinch and zoom on a page to zoom in. Since the spread mode shows two pages, navigating and reading the content of the page could require a lot of pinching and zooming for the reader. 
This is why we developed guided or smart reading. Once you tag each frame with the guided reading enrichment, the user just needs to double tap the text. The guided reading enrichment automatically zooms into that frame and navigation buttons appear at the bottom of the page. The user can simply click on the arrows on either side of the screen to automatically be guided through the reading experience. Now that we understand what AVE PDF looks like when rendered, I can define the project in InDesign and add the guided reading feature. Let's take a look at how to set this up in InDesign. Back to our project we were defining in the Project Manager panel. We can scroll to the bottom of this panel and click OK. I will explain the device section when we cover Aave Mag later on in this presentation. Now that we have a project defined, we can import those print-ready InDesign documents into the project. I'll choose the Import ID file icon. Now I can pick my InDesign document and upload it to this panel. If you would like to follow along, the file is called AVE PDF and is located in the Getting Started folder in the AVE PDF folder. Project settings for projects are located at the bottom of the AVE Interactivity panel. Once opened, you can choose the AVE tab. The settings for a project include things such as the customization of the menu bar, adding analytics to your project, and even the content fitting mode. Remember, since we are not changing the document size, you can pick a default content fitting mode for your pages. That is found in the Reader section. Now that we have reviewed some of the project settings, we can take a look at the AVE Interactivity panel. You can find the AVE Interactivity panel under Aquafatis in the menu. If I draw a second box on the page, you can see all the different kinds of interactive features I can add to this document. Notice that the panel is broken up into four sections, Ave Mag, Ave PDF, EPUB Reflow, and EPUB Fix. Since we are in an Ave PDF project, that tab is automatically selected for us, and the interactivities that are not grayed out are the ones that are supported in this simple format. You can add things such as videos, audio, hyperlinks, and slideshows to this project format. I will add the Smart Reading Enrichment. You will begin by having nothing selected on your InDesign page. When you open the AVE Interactivity panel with nothing selected, you will see the Customize Smart Reading Enrichment. Choose the Customize Smart Reading Enrichment. Click the plus sign next to Smart Reading to add your first Smart Reading Enrichment you can have more than one. For example, you might only want Smart Reading to work until the end of Chapter 1. Then the user would need to swipe to get to Chapter 2, where a new Smart Reading sequence would begin. I'll enter the name Chapter 1 for this Smart Reading sequence. Then I'll click on the right-facing arrow to the left of Smart Reading. All you need to do is click on the icon to the right of the frame list. You can now choose all of your frames by simply clicking on them in the correct order on every page. Since this example just has one text frame on every page, I simply need to just scroll to the next page and select the next text frame for each page. You'll notice that the list of items will grow as you click on every frame you choose. Once you are done, you just need to click on the Done button. You'll also notice that a tap action can also be applied to this Smart Reading series. This means that if a user taps on the text frame while in guided reading, an action can now be assigned. If you click on the left-facing arrow, you now go back to the main Smart Reading window where you can add more instances of Smart Reading. All of these instances can easily be edited by choosing the arrow to edit each instance. Now that Smart Reading has been added, we can generate and test this document. First, I will save the InDesign document. Then I will open the Project Manager panel. I will click on Generate Project to create this interactive content. You will notice that there are three tabs at the top of this export window. AVE, which is the files we make for use in applications made in App Factory. EPUB, 
which is for reflow or fixed layout export, and web, which is our export to a web reader file. In AVE, we can pick a file to either be generated in Retina or non-Retina. What this means to you is that you can leave all of your images set to 300 dpi like they were for print. Then when you actually want to host this file in an app, you can make a retina and a non-retina save file to host. When the device calls for the file, if the device is retina, it will download the retina file. For this example, I will leave it set to high quality devices or non-retina. I will click on generate project at the bottom. A warning will appear to tell you that this article needs to be generated. Choose yes. You will notice that Photoshop will launch and your images will automatically be downsampled and saved for you. Once this generation is complete, you can send this file to the Aquafatus Viewer app. Make sure your device is turned on and the Aquafatus Viewer app is launched. In order to send this file from InDesign to the device, the most important part of this process is that the computer and the device need to be on the same wireless network. Now I can choose the test button. As long as the device and the computer are on the same network and the device is still on and the Aquafatus Viewer app is running, you will see your device name in the list. Choose your device and click Send. The project you created will appear on your device in the Aquafatus Viewer app. Click on it. You will see that with the device held vertically, you see one page. And with the device held horizontally, you see spread. And if I double tap a text frame, Smart Reading is activated. And I am guided through the reading process. Now that we know the basic workflow for creating and sending a project to the Aquafatus Viewer, we can take a look at setting up an AVE MAG project and we can add some more interactivities. Now we will create another project. Click on the plus sign to create a project. I will name this project My First AVE MAG. For the project type, I will leave this set to AVE MAG. For the orientation, you can choose to have all horizontal, all vertical, or both horizontal and vertical. You cannot just have some pages that contain the other orientation. For this example, I will set it to both horizontal and vertical. The devices become important when you are designing to a specific device size. For example, if I am designing for an iPad, I can leave the settings at the bottom set to the default project size of 1024 by 768. Again, for the retina output, you will still define your pages at 1024 by 768 and just use 300 dpi images. If I was designing an issue that was going to be on an iPhone or another specific device like a Kindle Fire, I would want to pick that at the bottom of the new project window when I was making the new project. And all of my InDesign documents that I add to that project should be that correct size. For example, if I made a project that was for the iPad, I would make the documents 1024 by 768, and when the project was ready to publish, I would export out two ZAVE files, one that was Retina and one that was non-Retina. Let's say that for that exact same content, I want to have an iPhone version. I could publish the same iPad content in the iPhone version, but the content would appear letterboxed and much smaller if I don't resize the pages and rework the content. So for the iPhone, I would make a new project that was set for the iPhone size. I would then duplicate all my finished iPad InDesign documents. Then I could bring them into the new iPhone project, change the size of every InDesign page, and rework the content to fit the screen sizes of an iPhone. For this iPad project, I will just click OK. I have a document already built that we can bring in as a cover. It is in the Getting Started folder, in the Ave Mag folder, and it is called Cover May 2014. You can click on the Import ID File button to import the file. Once you import the file, you can double click the dark gray title bar 
that contains the document name to open the file through the Project Manager panel. If I look at the document setup, you can see that this file is set for the intent of digital publishing with the page size set to iPad. First, let's take a look at how we can access the second orientation. The two orientations for this document are stored in the same InDesign file. You can access the second orientation by choosing the AVE Interactivity panel. In the bottom right corner of the panel is the Change Orientation button. When I click on the vertical icon, I access the vertical page. You can see how I need to rework the content to fit in this vertical space. Again, it is not mandatory that you make both orientations. That is up to you to decide. Since these elements exist in both layouts, you can make changes to the text and it will be reflected in the opposite layout. If you don't want to see an object in one orientation, simply hide the visibility of the object in the Layers panel. I'll save the document and switch back to the horizontal layout. Now I'll save it again. You will notice that I now have preview images for both the horizontal and the vertical view in the A Project Manager panel. I can generate and export this project now so we can see what it looks like in the Aquafatis viewer on the iOS simulator. When I click on Test, I can send this to the Aquafatis viewer on the iOS simulator. You can use the keyboard shortcut of command right arrow to rotate the device on the iOS simulator. Now that we know how to switch orientations, we will add another document and some basic interactivities to it. I'll add another document I've already prepared for you. I'll add page two through five, May 2014, as the next article. In these pages, we will add three interactivities. I have an image that goes to full screen, a slideshow, and a scrollable layout. Now I'll show you how easy it is to build these simple interactivities. As you can see, this is the image I want to add full screen capabilities to on page three. To define the full screen interactivity, I simply need to select an image, choose the picture enrichment, and check enable full screen. That's it. Now to define a slideshow on page four. I can choose a frame I want to use as the slideshow. I pick the slideshow enrichment in the AVE interactivity panel. I'll change the number of slides to three and the placement of the thumbnails to be on the right side of the slideshow. Now I can choose to create the slideshow. I click on files to choose my three slideshow images. You can import the three images from the assets folder. I'll choose three files then I'll click OK. I can drag and drop these files into a specific order if I want to. I can then define the settings for the slideshow. I can enable the animation so that the slideshow automatically starts playing at a timed interval. I can even enable the slideshow to show full screen. And apply effects such as a custom Ken Burns to specific images to tell the image where the start and end point of the effect are. You'll notice that three buttons were already created for me that once clicked will show the correct image. I can import my images into these frames as well. Finally, I'd like to show you how we handle scrollable layouts. Our scrollable layouts are handled as InDesign documents within InDesign documents. Let me show you how we build these. I'll start by defining a frame that is 952 by 696 pixels on page 5. Inside this frame is where I'll place my scrollable content. I place the items we need to build the scrollable frame on the pasteboard on the right. I'll copy these items before we make the new InDesign document for the scrollable frame. I'll create a new InDesign document that is the same width of 952, but I'll make the height larger for the scrollable area. I'll make the height 1,130 pixels. I'll also uncheck facing page. Now I can paste the content. Now I can save this document and close it. Back in the original InDesign document, I can place that InDesign document into the frame I created. 
Now I can apply the sub layout enrichment to this frame. I'll make sure that the scroll direction is set to vertical. And since this project is set to both orientations, I can also go fix the vertical layout before I generate the project. I will need to make a new scrollable layout that fits that other orientation. Now I can save the document and generate the whole project. Since I made this document with two InDesign documents, the swiping behavior of this Zave is that I can swipe to the right to get to the next article. Since the next article has four pages, I can swipe upward to go down to the next page of the document. If you want all horizontal swiping instead of downward article navigation, this can be turned on in Project Settings, AVE, and by switching the navigation mode from columned to linear. When I go to the second page of the second article, you can see that the image goes full screen when I double tap it. And the slideshow works as I click on each button. And the scrollable layout scrolls. If you would like to open the finished project to generate it yourself, you can load the DPE file called Getting Started AvePDF.DPE or the file Getting Started AvMag.DPE. Whole projects can be exported as self sustaining files called DPEs. These DPEs can be loaded into your project manager panel and they contain all the graphics and elements you need so you can reverse engineer both of these getting started projects. When you import the DPE, you will first be prompted to choose the DPE, then you will need to create an empty folder for the file to expand into. Thanks for watching.